because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, hello, hello. This is Shirley Crawford, the owner of Second Chance Consulting and the executive director of the Women's Business Center, RVA, coming to you with another episode of Work Hardaholics. For me, it's another Sunday afternoon coming into the office, just checking in to share a little bit with you all. Because as you know, Work Hardaholics, we do more than the average bear, but we have to make sure that we keep things in balance and that we share the tools and tips that'll keep us and help us allow to be more productive. And so, let the games begin. As always, I'll start with our word for the week. And this word this week is a word I didn't even know prior to this week. So, um, because we've all had a billion Zoom meetings and conferences, etc., because most people are still on quarantine at home, as they wisely should be. And so on, um, I had a Zoom meeting this week for the LMR class that I'm in. Class of 2020, whoop, whoop, LMR. That's Leadership Metro Richmond for the rest of you who don't know. And so one of my classmates, Melanie, um, who's in academia and a very bright woman. And so she used the word hegemony, although I think she said hegemonic which is still the same thing in a different variation. And um, and I got it from the context clues, which is what we do when we don't know. You listen for the context clues. But I still thought, hey, I don't know that word. <gasps> Let us research it. So hegemony um, means uh, leadership or dominance. So it's normally one group over another. So it can be as simple as like the SCA over a school or it could be countries or nations or Rome is often used as a hegemonic presence. Um, see, I've learned a lot since I looked it up. Thank you very much, Melanie. Appreciate you. And so I'm sharing it with you all. I don't know how you'll use it or when you'll use it or where, but aren't you glad now you know it? Hegemony. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. Yeah. It's that kind of week. It's that kind of life. It's that kind of day. All right, then. so, but with that in mind, when I thought about our bucket moment, you know, I like themes, I'm like, all right, hegemony, hegemonic, rulership, leadership, governments, and so, um, oh, I'm jumping ahead. So I'm really supposed to start with our time tool tip technique. That's what happens next. But still, and with all that in mind, still keeping the theme in mind, um, I was really thinking about how you can be more in control, how you can have more dominance over your schedule. Because right now, with everyone working from home, you're learning the challenges of discipline and having lots of influences. My sister made a statement on Facebook, my baby sister, um, and she made the statement that she's a stay-at-home mom. And she's like, I don't mind. Staying at home is no problem. This is the norm. She said, the problem is all the other people who are now staying at home all day too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that was hilarious. So there's a lot of that management happening right now. And so um, one of the things I want to share with you is for your time tool tip technique is schedule, schedule, schedule. So if you've ever done a consultation with me, I'm often talking about your calendar being your best friend. So there are lots of like scheduling um, apps that you can utilize, schedulers, blah, blah, blah. I don't care which one you're using so much as how you're using it. So before this time period, I was always saying, if you're working on a business, if you're working on certain things, you book time with yourself. So if you've ever talked to me, you've heard me say it before, I've said it on here before, you book time with yourself as if it were um, a, a meeting with the most important person in the world to you. If that's a president, if that's a celebrity, that when you book time with yourself for your business, that you hold it in that high level of esteem that you won't break that appointment. Um, so um, while that's important, that's not really what I'm talking about today. So I want you to confuse the two. Right now, what I'm saying is, um, when we talk about schedule, schedule, schedule. Um, so actually look at your day when you get started. So I've talked before about using like the Pomodoro technique. If you don't remember, go back and look at the videos before. Where have you been? Um, or you can just look at it. And so that's one way to section off your day so that you can be focused. The point is to be focused on an area, then move to the next area. 
to focus and, and it actually helps you to take breaks. It'll say, all right, after this 25 minute interval, take a break and it will count it down. And then after this interval, take a break. So there are repeated breaks throughout the day. And that's not something that a lot of us normally do. So like I know I get into the office, I get super focused. Well, I get super focused anyway. And so you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. But do you think to say, oh, let me stop for a few minutes. So I am, one of the new things I'm going to be in, initiating into my life is that around three o'clock, which is normally the time I'm not the most productive anyway, I'm going to start taking a walk, right? And so I'm just going to get up, go take a couple laps around the parking lot. It's over there, parking lot. Go take a couple laps around the parking lot. Just, and it, it'll give me, help me get my steps in, right? Because we still have that 50 by 50 challenge. Um, and then it'll also help, you know, get the blood flowing, get my mind recirculating, get me back on task, so sometimes just sitting there isn't the best answer. So your time tool technique that I am suggesting is block out your time accordingly and um, make sure that you're actually taking real breaks. Put the breaks. So normally I'm saying put the work on the calendar. Now I'm saying put your breaks on your calendar. So for mine right now, 3 o'clock is go take a walk, Shirley. Yeah, just that simple. Yay. All right. So now our book it moment. Once again, thinking about um, hegemony and taking control of time and also really thinking about the things that are going on in the world right now. And so especially like the LMR class we just had, we talk a lot about servant leadership and comparing national leadership to local leadership, be it regional, to your city, to your county, etc. Um, not politicizing the conversation at all, but I thought this book was really interesting, like interwoven with that concept. And it's not specifically talking about the U.S. It's actually talking about like worldwide as a concept, but it seems really interesting. So the book is If Mayors Rule the World, Dysfunctional Nations and, let me actually look at the title, Rising Cities. So um, if mayors rule the world, dysfunctional nations and rising cities. And so it's really all about whether or not whoever you have running the country, um, it's a statement about how various mayors, we say mayors, um, but they're saying for, I always think of mayors as being a U.S. thing, but it's not all the way, right? Um but how others have managed to, in that particular regionalism, make the decisions that are necessary for their region in the context of their overarching government. And so um, it feels very much at home for me right now because we're all looking at our governors and our mayors making decisions um, in comparison and contrast to like our national decisions. And it comes up often, again, because... Um, Sometimes the two bump heads. So it's really interesting to watch. So just an interesting read. I'm not having a massive, massive political conversation. Just an interesting thought process about um, how government is run and who has hegemony and who doesn't. Just a thought. Think about it. All right. So on that note, I am actually moving on to our work hard, play harder moment. So I've heard a lot of you say that working from home isn't easy. Duh. <laughs> It requires, it's one of the reasons I don't, I, I am not a good online class taker. It requires a discipline. I need accountability. Um, yeah, I need stuff to keep myself engaged. Plus there's so many things for me to think about and work on for me to focus on the thing that is supposed to happen today. I have to have something to account that too. So self-employed, no problem. Work from home, eh problem. And so a lot of you are dealing with that. And so I'm going to say, uh, work hard, play harder to thine own self be true. So you need to know yourself and how you work so that you can work better. So I am, I work best first thing in the morning. And so, which is part of the reason why I don't take appointments in the morning. I'm often not even in the office first thing in the morning. I actually am working from home or elsewhere, or sometimes I'll come into the office and close my door so that I can get the stuff that's important to me done without interruption. And so like I have a curtain on my door because I have a glass, I have glass panes on my door and I'll shut it all off. You need to know that for you. Are you better in the afternoon? Do you need background noise? Do you need activity? What do you need? Like I like quiet. Like I don't often play music when I'm working unless like 
my music ha- even my music has a vibe. If I'm playing classical, it's to keep myself like from being frustrated. Like classical music does that for me. If it's late afternoon, um, it might be like gospel hip hop in particular, um, to like keep me pumped up and revving with like these really motivational messages with a really good beat. Um, sometimes I very rarely play country when I'm working. I mean, I like country just fine. Um, I'm eclectic in my musical taste. That goes back to my musical training and background. And so it comes into play in that way. So you have to know you. You have to know what works for you. And just because it works for someone else doesn't mean that it works for you. So there you go. All righty then. I got more work to do. And, uh, but still, you all stay sane. Stay safe. Stay sound. And as always, live better. Do better. Be better. And happy entrepreneuring. Don't forget to like, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ta-ta! Because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da.